and make it a whole lot easier. So if we look at what the view is and what we're talking about today, um, it's about having a simpler architecture and a simpler vision to tie all these bits together and make it fundamentally easier to deploy and manage storage. But the benefit here is not just at the storage layer. The benefit is when you look at the application layer, and probably how many of you are, are maybe not doing virtualization? You don't have to stick your hand up, maybe just a polite nod. <laughs> right. Everyone's doing virtualization. Um, but when you start to virtualize more and more of these critical applications, again, that's where the breakpoint is emerging around scalability. Scalability meaning how quickly can I deploy things, how easy is it to ramp up an application, when someone asks me to, for a request, how can I provision more storage, and then be able to account exactly what you're using it for. And we think there's got to be a simpler way. And the simpler way is around what we call our converged storage vision, or this fantastic buzzword, and I thought, Charles, I'll put in the buzzword, which is polymorphism. Polymorphic. Polymorphism. Thank you. Thank you. No one's laughing. Okay. <laughs> polymorphism, for those of you who've ever been in software development, uh, polymorphic is, a, is an object orientation term. Basically means that you've got one architecture in many different forms to do many different things, but it all looks the same. So one storage architecture for you know all of your connectivity from high to low, from um, this, you know a couple of terabytes all the way up to petabyte type scale. Because traditionally the architecture in the storage world is that you've got many different things, and sometimes you need lots of them, or you want to have resilience but not trade that off with performance. Okay, we're going to talk about some of those things and why they matter. So, you know, one approach, integrating all different types of data, one array, and also the critical thing at the bottom, as I spoke about, you know, an architecture for traditional storage, around spinning stuff, and next generation storage, around solid state. Now, solid state's interesting, because solid state's traditionally associated with today's view of solid state, which is NAND flash. The same sort of view that the, the, the SD card you put in your, your digital camera, Fundamentally, it's the same physics that goes into an enterprise high storage array. And that's great, but it's already end of life as an architecture. NAND flash going forward isn't going to be, from 2016 onwards, let's say, the future of solid state. So the question is for us is, let's build the architecture that is above whatever you plug in underneath. Okay? And that's very much what 3 is more talk about today. Why with SSD? Because, you know, it works really fast. It's also very expensive. So you only want to do as much as you need to. So you'll see here, one, that's our vision. We're talking about it today with 3PAR and then what does all this sort of stuff mean? And the idea is, you know, converged storage. Converged storage for us is around having the bits working together, one platform for many different types of data. But also the converged bit for us, given where the, the, where the, you know, the leading hardware vendor, anybody not here use HP servers or hasn't used HP servers at some point in your life? Because we'll get you a special, we'll get you a little drink or something. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll see if we can convert you on that. But our idea is that servers and storage needs to work together. A storage array on its own does pretty much not a lot. It's the application on top of it that makes a difference. So convergence for us is getting the management tools, for example, of what we have with ProLine, and you know, ProLine for many, many years being the leading server platform, getting that integrated with storage, getting the network fabric better integrated with storage, means that when things happen, you've got a much better view in terms of how to solve problems, much easier to administer, much easier to integrate as well with your virtualization layer on top that runs on the server. So for us, converging the management and making it easy to provision services is a critical thing for us. And the other idea, this is a really, really important thing, because storage is never static, no one says, I've got 20 terabytes, that's all I'll ever need for the next sort of five years. We all know that we're growing in terms of the data use that we have. So when we do grow, we don't want that to be disruptive. Because if you do that, then guess what happens? You've got to have outages. And outages cause pain and hurt to the business. Because of the virtualization layer, if you're virtualizing servers, virtualization means I don't need a change window. So if I'm virtualizing all my servers and getting all that benefit, how come the storage is dumb enough to say, oh, hang on a second, I've got to actually fail over and take things offline, and, and we think that's nuts. You know, it should be non-disruptive the way that these things work. What you do with your virtual machine layer should be kind of replicated into what your storage does. They should actually work the same. You know, the CPU and the memory that you virtualize with VMware or Hyper-V or whatever virtualization you happen to use, that's how we believe the storage architecture should be as well, highly virtualized. You know, running effectively the storage array as a giant big virtual machine of storage. That's exactly what 3 does. 
most traditional arrays, the mainframe, the client server ones, don't work like that. They're still very physical, discrete assets. They're not virtualized architectures. And then the idea is as well, again, you know, world's leading uh, x86 server architecture. So of course all the goodness that we have on the server side should relate into all the services that we have and the architecture and the design smarts for how we build storage. And that's very much what our vision is as well. So that brings us into 3PAR. Okay, and 3PAR is kind of like the living embodiment of you know, what we're going to talk about today, plus also solving a lot of those issues that I just highlighted in terms of architecture and efficiency. Anyone not heard what 3PAR is or what the PAR knows, what it stands for, what it is? Okay, cool, thank you. So, um, interesting, when, when I first started 3PAR, I picked up customers, hi, I'm Steve Kelly from 3PAR, and they thought, of course, I was selling uh, golf memberships. <laughs> uh, nothing to do with golf, nothing to do with golf. Um, just like HP is, PAR is the founder's initials, uh, Price, Ashok and uh, Rogers. Um, Price and Ashok, Ashok Singhal, the A, and Jeff Price are with HP still today, They're very much involved still in the design. Their invention back in, when 3PAR as a company started over 12 years ago in Silicon Valley, was to build multi-processor scale-out server architectures. They worked for the only company that really cracked that and was very successful at it. That company was Sun Microsystems. This was back in the mid-90s. Their view was, we've got the server scaling, how come the storage sucks so bad? This whole dual controller client server architecture doesn't scale. And they saw that back over 15 years ago. So their whole, you know, using their brain power was to say, let's redesign the server and the storage, and the storage looks like a giant big virtual machine architecture with shared memory and cache and ports and disks. Just like we all take for granted is what VMware or Hyper-V does to our servers today. So they fundamentally turn it on its head. Okay? No other storage vendor has been able to do that successfully. Why? It takes a lot of brains. Also, we've got a lot of patents locked up. So that's why you know, we believe we have a fundamental architecture advantage. And the architecture advantage and the founding principles of 3PAR haven't changed in those 12 years. And you can actually, anyone know the Wayback When machine? Anyone go to archive.org? In there. So the Wayback When Machine, you can go to this website called the Wayback When Machine, just Google it, and you can look up any web page of any website, or well, a lot of them, um, at a point in time over the past, you know, since the web was founded. So they're like a national museum for websites, and you can go and look at what the website looks like. It's funny, you go to the three-par website, and you, you, know, you see these things, the, the founding principles. It's interesting, because you go to some websites, and of course you see how much things have changed. It's very interesting. Anyway, with 3PAR, we believe that storage had to be much high performing, much smarter and manage itself so that you don't have to do the basic storage repetitive admin tasks. Very efficient in the way that it actually writes data because we believe that most storage is massively over provisioned and underutilized. Again, if you remember server virtualization, VMware, the value proposition there was to increase the utilization of CPU on x86 servers. That's what, VM, that's what we use VMware. How do I carve up you know, the utilization, put all these virtual machines in? Exactly what 3 was too, for storage. But also then, multi-tenancy. Now multi-tenancy, you might be thinking, well, what does that really mean? Multi-tenancy means a bunch of different things. Multi-tenancy means, how can I have this big physical array um, and carve it up into like virtual private arrays for different sorts of applications or business units or workloads? But also, what happens when you do that is you get lots of mixed workload contention. You know, this application over here, like this, these VMs are running 80% of my I.O. Um, these VMs over here are running nothing. They might be just for test and dev. How do I make my array smart enough to balance all of those different workloads without me having to program it or tune it or manage it? And that's very much in the heart. The hardware that's inside 3PAR is able to do that without me having to know anything about storage. Most storage arrays, the ones I put up on the client server mainframe, that's where all your burden goes tuning and managing, or buying separate storage arrays for each different workload, and we think that's crazy. So the whole idea with 3PAR is run it along here, it'll manage itself and do it far more efficiently, usually a factor of 2x, sometimes 3x the efficiency rate that you're currently consuming storage at the moment. And that means a whole lot less money spent in how much it costs to buy, how much it costs to run, how much it costs to implement, and the ongoing upgrade cost over the life of the product. So economically, that's the value proposition of 3PAR. This new federated term pretty much says that, well, sometimes the reality is in your business, you might have multiple different like little 7200s. Can I wire them together and send data between them or even load balance between different arrays? Because 
traditionally the view is, well, I've got an island of storage here, and I've got an island of storage here, and the two don't meet together. Okay? What if I just want to send a LUN, you know, a piece of storage from here over to here? Through Par federates those, and you can manage it all from a single pane of glass. So again, very easy to do it. Um, and so that data mobility for us is key. And that's also key when you t start talking about migration from EDA environments to 3PAR, or in the future from other storage environments to 3PAR as well. And so that value prop we've had in 3PAR for many years, we've now kind of said, right, well, that's really good for the high end. How about we shrink that down into a 2U form factor? Exactly the same software, same value prop, same efficiency, same multi-tenancy, same auto, auto magic features that we have in 3PAR into this thing called 3 plus also 7000. So the 7000 series is our new... It's the smiley face you're running up with that thing. That's what you guys are doing. Um, into the same value prop but in a different form factor with 3 part. So that's our big news today. 3 part was traditionally used by the big cloud service providers um, way back in, you know, probably before the C word became pervasive. So cloud providers love 3 part because for them and here's the secret of cloud providers, is they want to charge you for what they allocate to you, not what you actually consume. That's the business model. So with 3PAR, it lets you do that, but then the data you write to the array, write it very, very efficiently, but you're paying for allocated. So when you think about this in your own environment, when you're doing cost recovery to your different business units, is that the same principle? Use all the multi-tenancy features, cut down the actual storage spend, make it a lot more efficient to be able to provision and manage your, your VMs out to the host. And so 3 is able to do that. And the key things we talk about is that you actually don't need any storage people to run a 3 you know, Traditionally, in a, in a really high-end storage array, you need months or years worth of you know, storage PhD to actually tune and run one of those big mainframe storage arrays, like our 9500, or like an EMC Symmetrics, for example, or a Hitachi BSP. We basically say, that's rubbish. Why isn't storage as easy to manage as, say, you know, these here? Um, so that's what 3PAR does, and we stand by that. But also, when you do it, actually help me consume much less storage. Um, only actually write data uh, from the application much more efficiently than what I actually allocate out. So only consume data when it's written on the array. Don't, don't carve an array out and pre-provision and create pools, and that's a thin pool, and that's a fat pool, whatever. The architecture of 3PAR is about taking data, writing it to disk in the smallest possible what we call allocation unit, which in a 3PAR array is about 16K. Some arrays, like our 9500, if you have a small block of data, it'll actually write a giant big 42 megabyte chunk and reserve the whole space in the pool, 3PAR 16K. And then if that little 16K write, say so VM is writing some data, that 16K, let's say that's full of zeros, as in it's actually you know, null data, it's just empty space. 3 is smart enough to actually strip out the data so none of those actual zeros hit disk on the fly at Y speed. Okay? And that's when you do a thin conversion, as we call it, from, say, an EVA to a 3 par 3 par in the flight of data is stripping out that wasted capacity. And that's how we get 50% guarantee. Everyone does thin provisioning. It's pretty easy now. 3 par is the pioneer in thin provisioning. It's not what you do, but how you do it that matters. Okay? At scale, in production, with no performance trade-off. Then the other thing is, you know, it's this whole idea that, well, I've chosen a small baby 7200 or small little 7003 part, not to have any trade-offs, like not to lose any of the resilience or the, you know, auto magic capability or the scale of what 3 part can do. 3 part for many years now has been the, the industry benchmark leader for brown spinning disk performance, what we call the SPC1 benchmark. So 3 part, a single 3 part array on its own just with brown spinning disk, for at least over the past sort of five to six years, is the industry benchmark speeds, you know, performance leader by a factor of um, a huge amount, probably by about 3x. When we put Flash in a 3-part, go straight off the charts from there as well. We'll talk about Flash and what 3-part config can give you. And then the idea again that you can scale out, you can wire them together, you can take, you know, four 7200s 70, and make them all look like a logical array. Very, very cool. So to sort of capture that, these have been the traditional 3PAR bread and butter onto the right hand side, you know, what we call our 10,000 series. Quite simply, what we're doing is saying, well, you know, not everybody in the room here has a petabyte of data they need to use, but I really like those features. Can I have it in a small 